Welcome back guys, my name is Legit Lee and I'm back again with a brand new video for you. This is going to be an update of my machine that I've been designing in Blender. And if you guys are interested in Blender at all or designing anything in real life like this here, um, consider um, joining my Facebook group. It is in my channel description. So if you go straight to my channel, my Facebook group is called Blender Designs in IRL. So in real life. And um, I design stuff like this all the time and I post stuff to that group and I let anybody post anything that has to do with Blender. So definitely consider joining the group. And um, today I wanna to talk about this machine because this is just an update. I wanna say I'm like 50% done. And that's just because there are other motherboards and pro, uh, microprocessors that I want to try out with this machine. So. It will never be fully finished for a little while because of all the testing purposes I'm going to be doing. What cameras can be added to this machine, how much weight it can do, how fast it can move, how slow it can move, all kind of different stuff and what controllers we use. Um, so at the moment I'm using an ESP32 motherboard or a processor these go for anywhere between $10 to $15 for the chip, um, depending on eBay or Amazon that you get it from. And the chip can do 32-bit processing, that's why it's called 32. It has Bluetooth and Wi-Fi built in, so you can connect to a Bluetooth controller or a Wi-Fi server or motherboard um, or a controller or your phone, smartphone, either Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, whatever one you prefer. And um, at the moment though, we're running it off of this PlayStation 3 um, remote control. And it can run off of a PlayStation 4, which I will do testing and add one later. I just have to, I haven't had a chance to do that just yet. I've only been using this one for testing purposes. And this is just a generic one. You don't need a full blown Sony PlayStation 3 controller. You can get the generic. This is generic from Amazon. Um, so, Motherboard probably cost me about 10. This probably cost me about 10. And then the stepper drivers I'm using is the TB6600 stepper drivers. And they come in a pack of four, I believe. So I had to order two packs because I'm running eight motors, technically is going to be happening in the future. Today's demonstration, there's only three axes that's gonna run. That'll be X, A as an apple, and then B as in boy. So we have the X axis that goes left and right. A as an apple that'll do a pan uh, rotation. Like if you had a tripod that you wanted to spin like left and right um, curving. And then um, B will be our tilt, so up and down for the camera. Um, I don't have the camera stuff mounted just yet. I just want to show you that the axes do work with this controller. That's my demonstration for today. And what I'm using here in, gen in a general basis sense. So I have a 24 volt power supply. You can buy these pretty cheaply around 50 to $80 on Amazon or eBay. I would stick with the mains well because they're really well suited for stuff like this. And um, it's only running 24 volts and that's powering all the stepper drivers that you see here, but I'm only using three of them at the moment, but it can power all of them individually and or all together as well and then we have a power bank now i will be adding a small little adjustable power supply that will be running off of this power supply to power the esp but right now i'm just using this power bank for testing purposes so what i'm doing is i'm just turn this power supply on and i plug it into the usb type b port using this connector this power cord or usb um, cord and I plug it in. You can see now it has a red light on. That means it is powered on. And you can see on my um, char battery bank that it's at 96%. This thing hardly uses any power to run this whole machine. I can run, I'm pretty sure I can run this machine for days on end without any problems with it sucking any power really out of this power bank. So the, that's what I like about this controller because it's only using the signal information to move the motors. So it's not going to use a whole lot of power to do stuff like that. And then it's using low energy Bluetooth connectivity. So again, less power. So that will be pretty good if you're trying to use this 
type of setup for a robot, for instance, that's driving a car or anything like that, uh, like an RC car or a robotic version of this that has wheels. So that's why I wanted to mention that you can run this all off of a power supply here. Anyway, um, so now that we have the ESP32 on, all I have to do is press the home button or this circle button that has no home button look on there. Um, if I press the home button, you can see that the lights are flashing. And once they start rapid flashing like this right here, that means it's connect it connected. It looks like it's fully on, but there's very small pulses of the light going on and off. They could barely, you may not even be able to see it on this video, but they're very, very fast pulsing. Anyway, now that it's connected, the only thing I want to do now is flip the power supply on to give the stepper drivers power. So now that we have that, I have my X linked to the joystick for X and um, for left and right. So if I move over to the right, it'll move to the right. And if I want to move to the left, it'll move to the left. So if I move all the way, I want to just move it towards the middle so you guys can see pretty clearly that everything is working just fine. It is a little noisy, and that's just because the stepper drivers don't have like silent pulsing. And plus, it doesn't have any weight on it. The more weight this machine has, the quieter it will be because there's more tension on the motors, so it won't have it will have less vibration because the machine will be more rigid at that point. Anyway, the machine can move flawlessly with the controller, so if I like jerk it around really quick, it's pretty responsive. And so with that being said, it can move all the way on the X, all the way back and front, um, back and forth without any issues. It's not counting the movement information. That's one of the reasons why I want to try out different um, motherboards and things of that nature. Now, the, I can get it to program that, and I have been trying to develop something like that with a, another person that I've hired off of a website for freelance work called Fiverr. So um, I will be getting with him more on stuff like that. But for right now, this is where I'm at. And... Um, so we have the X. Now for the A axis at the moment, I have it connected to the X button and the square. Now the reason why I have it to, for two different buttons is for clockwise and counterclockwise. So if I hit X, that moves counterclockwise. And again, the machine is moving um, with high vibration, so if I just literally put my finger on this stepper driver's shaft right here on the coupler part and just press the button, it'll be silent. So you hear that? And that just shows that if you have more weight on here, that it will be able to make the movements more quieter. And on top of that, if you think about it, I'm only putting my finger on here, so the more weight this will have, which is gonna be a lot more than me just pressing my finger on it, it will definitely be able to move a whole lot more quieter so compared to this so with that being said the machine does move pretty good now i can't do a whole 360 degree rotation like i want because this belt is not a fully closed loop belt, this is just a open loop belt that I tried to convert to a closed loop while I wait on a closed loop belt to come in. So what I did was I super glued some material, like some kind of fabric, to help have a good mounting, and then I super glued a piece of the belt on the back of that, so it's sandwiched together. So it's pretty tight, but I wouldn't put too much stress on it because I feel like it would break and that would mess up this whole demonstration here. And then, um, so we have the A axis, so A as in alpha, and then B axis, so B as in boy, is going to be the whole pan. So this was, um, this was, I'm sorry, this is pan where it moves the camera like left to right, like shaking your head left to right. And then tilt, so nodding your head like you're saying yes, would be the B axis, and that's controlled with O and square, or triangle I mean. So if I hit the circle button, it does clockwise, 
and you can see it here so if you follow along like any of those four bolt heads that I have right here it can rotate just fine and clockwise and counterclockwise as well this does full 360 degree rotation so counterclockwise with uh, triangle So that will be your whole pan and till, which you're only really going to be using maybe 270 degrees for like a tilt, depending on what your tilt, why you would tilt that way is completely up to you. But you do, you can do 360, no problem. It's just you probably won't really be going, flipping your camera around like if you're trying to flip over your whole body or something. So. Um, it, you have that ability, but I'm not, honestly, I don't think I'm ever going to go past like 270 to 240 degrees because if you're tilting your head up and down, then you're only going to be using probably like a good 90 to 100 degrees maybe or something. I don't really know. I don't know the exact terminology or measurement information and degrees between pan and tilt head stuff, but... All I know is you're not really going to flip your whole camera around, so doing 360 degrees is kind of pointless, but you have it if you want it. And um, also for this, the Y-axis is kind of connected. Granted, I broke one of the plexiglass pieces that I cut, laser cut out um, on this side, so I, had to replace, I have to replace that here like today probably. It's, it will take like literally 10, 20 minutes to do. But um, the... Wires are connected currently. They're just not wired up. I gotta wait for more of the shielding cable that I got. This is for like CNC machines and stuff of that nature because it shields any of the pulsing information so they won't get miscommunicated. And if you're wondering if you can move every axis all together, you can. So it isn't like you can only move one at a time or something. You can literally if I want to move to the left and then uh, pan towards the right or something. So if I move to the right and pan towards the left, for instance, then opposite direction. Or if you want to do, you know, rotate B axis or tilt and this one, or if you need to do all three, for instance, uh, let's see, that, yeah, yeah, okay. So if I do all three, for instance, hit this button, this button, this button, so left, right, then we are do um, clock, counterclockwise on the A axis for tilt, and then clockwise for the, um, so for pan, we're on clock, counterclockwise, and for tilt, we'll be on clockwise, and then for X, we'll be moving over to the right, so... I just click all three. That was kind of locked in. Okay. okay, so if I go backwards. So you can control all of them. Now, granted, that's the reason why I have these buttons all really close to each other. So, like, if you need to move left and right, I mean, that's one, one joystick doing that. And then I'm pretty sure I'm going to wind up mapping out um, the whole pan thing to this joystick. I just didn't do it just yet. I just want to show you that all the buttons work. All of them do, matter of fact. So, this will be clockwise and counterclockwise of another axis and counterclockwise, clockwise for another axis. So these two are linked together for one motor, these two are linked together, these two, these two, this one, that one, this one, that one. So left, right is another motor, up, down is another motor for both joysticks. Same thing with these, these are linked, left and right, up and down, links another motor, so that way you will have eight motors. So one, two, three, four, five, uh, five six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So really you can have ten motors, but well, I'm pretty sure I'm only using like eight because I only have eight steppers, but either way you can do it that way. So I just want to show you guys that you can run the whole entire machine using this one controller and you know just having to multi-press the, all the buttons. So 
Like if I needed to do it that way, it can do it with any without any issues is what I'm trying to say. Um, like I mentioned though, I will be doing more um, videos and updates of the system because I want to make sure that uh, I do testing. I want to see what really works the best for all this. And if you guys are interested in designing or wanted me to make one of these types for you, it will be a little, I want to say pricey. It just will take a little while because obviously I'm still working on it myself. But once I'm done, have everything dialed in and everything is working as best as I think I can possibly get the machine to do, then I may actually mass produce it. At least for sure, I will mass produce the motherboard, the drivers, and the firmware so you can buy it in one kit and then you can just make the machine yourself so if you don't really want it this big or if you have another machine that you kind of have in mind that you want to be able to run like this like a robot say one with wheels anything like that this controller can do it because all you're trying to do is move a bunch of stepper motors with a PlayStation 3 or PlayStation 4 controller and that would be your best bet at that point would be buying the circuitry from me. So I will design for sure a motherboard kit that you guys can buy from me. And I'll probably have it like on eBay first or something. Once I have everything dialed in, I'll have it available for you guys. I'm not going to try to make it too pricey, but obviously I spent a lot on just getting the code developed and the you know generic stuff here already bought from me. So it's, it cost me a good little penny. I want to say I'm roughly like close to $200 for the code and the materials and everything for just a controller. That does include stepper motors, wiring, the V wheels, the screws, the excursions, none of that. Just only the controller, the drivers, and the remote control. So literally that's around like $200 with the code involved and everything. So if you guys are interested and you are really wanting me to make that kit, let me know down in the comments down below. Because I don't want you guys to um, like, I don't want to make it yet. And then you guys, you know, aren't interested in here I am making motherboards that nobody's ever going to buy. I feel like this will be something somebody would like to own. Like at least the motherboard portion so they can make their own version of like a control robot thing but I don't know that for sure because I'm not like everybody else I hope somebody would want it but we don't know I don't know that until somebody asks us for it so if you guys want to have a kit like this just comment down below and let me know then I can make it for you guys you guys can buy it from me specifically and obviously I'm going to test it and make sure it works on my machine I uh, hope you guys liked the video. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell whenever you do get, uh, whenever I do have another video for you, you guys will be notified because there is going to be lots of updates, lots of tests, and I'm pretty sure you guys are going to enjoy it. I'll try to make it as fun as I can. I know that this video footage isn't the best considering that I have a Sony camera. I'm recording this video on my phone, but these little updates is just that, an update, so that's why I'm not trying to make them the best. But when I do test the camera out, you will see the best footage using my Sony a7 III camera. So I will for sure have good cinema quality type videos when I'm testing out the camera controller. Just for stuff like this, I will update just using like a smartphone recording the video and straight uploading it to YouTube so you guys can view it and follow my progress. I hope you guys have a great day. My name is Legit Lee and I will see you in the next video.